question 3.1 says determine sorry define the term impulse in words so impulse is the product of the net force acting on an object and the time over which the net force acts on the object. So we know that impulse is the impulse formula. You can say F net delta T is equal to the change in momentum. So we know that this part here is called impulse. And so look at what impulse actually is. Impulse is the net force or sorry, the product because they're multiplying and that's what product means. It's the product of the net force acting on an object and the time over which the net force acts on the object. That's all we are actually saying there. That's the definition for 3.1. 3.2 calculate the velocity of ball q after the collision so let's actually look at this question and read it properly so what we have is a ball p with mass m initially rolling eastwards okay so i'm going to draw a little picture for myself so this is ball p with a mass m and it's originally going eastwards then it collides with an identical ball so because it's identical that means they have the same mass which is rolling west Okay, so let's draw ball Q. Let's draw it a little bit closer. So this is ball Q, and it's rolling west at 15 meters per second. And it also has a mass of M because it's identical. Ignore the rotation, blah, 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 blah. The graph shows how the velocity of ball P changes with time. So all that you do is you look at the following. This graph represents ball P. So if you look at ball P carefully, it originally has a velocity of 10 and look at that it's positive 10 and we know that it's going eastwards they told us it's going eastwards and they've called it positive 10 what that means is that eastwards has been taken as positive for this question does that make sense they tell us that it's rolling at 10 meters per second and they've called it a positive you see whereas down here it's negative so ball p is rolling eastwards that's what they told us in the beginning and they've said that it's positive so that means going to the east direction is positive in this question then what happens is after the collision ball p goes at a velocity which can be found on this straight line and that velocity if you're to read it off would be negative six the negative six just means that it's going to go west okay so now what we can do is we can use the conservation of momentum formula most of the times when you have two objects crashing into each other it's going to be a conservation of momentum type of question so we know that that is going to be um, the mass of p times the velocity of p initial plus the mass of q times the velocity of q initial equals to the mass of p times the velocity of p final plus the mass of q times the velocity of q final and then we should always choose a direction i'm going to choose to the right as positive so the mass of p we don't know so we're just going to go mass of p the velocity of p originally was 10 and we can keep it a positive because we said to the right is positive or to the east and then we can say plus now the mass of q is also m so we can just but we'll say mq for now i'll show you what to do with that just now and the velocity of q is negative 15 because it's going west and we chose east as positive then on the other side we just fill in everything again so it's the mass of p the velocity of p final was negative six so we say negative six and we don't know what the velocity of q is so we're just going to say velocity of q final now remember that we said that the balls are identical so that means that these are the same so I can actually, and then I'm actually just going to call it m. So we can go m times 10 plus m times negative 15 equals to m times negative 6 plus m times the velocity of q final. Check this out, guys. Some of you might have been a bit confused with what to do with the mass. They're all the same, and so they all cancel out. Haha. <laughs> 
get out of here, you masses. And so what happens now is we're just left with 10 minus 15 equals to negative 6 plus the velocity of Q final. And now we can just go calculate the velocity of Q final. And if you had to go work it out, you would eventually get 1 meters per second. Now, because you're getting a positive answer and we chose to the east as positive, we can say, therefore, the velocity of Q final is going to be 1 meters per second, and that's going to be east. Okay, for question 3.3, it says, it is observed that the kinetic energy of the system decreases by 28.8 joules. Calculate mass M. So what we could possibly do is we know that they tell us that the kinetic energy of the system has gone down. So if I had to ask you, if you've got EK initial and you've got EK final of the system, let's say that this is for the system and this is for the system. If you read this sentence, which one is bigger? Is the final system kinetic energy bigger or is the initial system kinetic energy bigger? Well, obviously, the initial system's kinetic energy is bigger because they said that the kinetic energy of the system decreases. So what we can say is that the final kinetic energy is the same as the initial kinetic energy minus 28.8. You might have to pause and just Go over that once or twice. Um, but what we're saying is that the kinetic energy final is the same as what it was in the beginning, but then just minus 28.8. Okay, so that, that needs to make sense for you. So if you have to pause and just think about that for a bit, please do so. Now, the formula for kinetic energy is always given to you on the formula sheet, and that is a half mv squared. So the final kinetic energy would be the kinetic energy of bore P, so I'm going to go EK of bore P final plus EK of bore Q final equals to the EK of P initial plus the EK of P, sorry, Q minus 28.8. So if we still keep our direction of to the right as positive, even though kinetic energy doesn't have a direction, um, when we plug in the velocities, you'll see that they're going to all become positive. But let's just, you'll see now what I'm talking about. So we're going to say a half. Now we don't know what the mass of ball uh, P is. So we're just going to say, but let's just call it M, because we said that we said that the mass of P and the mass of Q is just the same, and it's M. Now the final velocity of ball P was negative 6 if we chose right as positive, but we're going to square that anyway, so the, d the direction doesn't really get affected in kinetic energy. Then we're going to say a half times m. Now, the final velocity of ball Q, we worked that out in question 3.2, and we got 1, and it was east. So that we'll just put in as a positive. Then we say equals to the initial, so the, we say half mass. Now the initial moment, I mean the velocity of ball P was 10. And then we say a half times M. And the initial velocity of ball Q was 15 west. So we say negative 15. And then we say minus 28.8. What's nice now is that in this formula you cannot cancel out the mass because this one does not have an M in it. And so if we had to go type this on the calculator, half times minus 6 squared, remember the minus 6 must go in a bracket, that's going to give us 18m plus a half m if you had to work that one out. This one would give you 50m. This next part would give you 112 0.5m minus 28.8. I'm going to take the 28.8 over to the left and everything else to the right. Like that. And so on the right hand side, we would end up with 144m. And so we can now work out the mass as 28.8 divided by 144. Oh, we get a lovely answer of 0 0.2 kilograms. 
Moving on to question 3.3.2. Calculate the magnitude of the net force acting on bore P during the collision. So typically when they talk about the net force and they've got mass, velocity, we've also got a bit of time over here, then you're typically going to be using F net, or let's rather first say times by delta T equals to delta P. We then choose a direction as positive. That is so important. So we say to the right as positive, for example. And they want us to calculate F net. So all we need to do is get the delta T over to the other side. Now, we know that delta P, let me write that down here, is the same as MVF minus MV initial. So I'm going to write it like that. MV final minus MV initial over delta t. Now we're doing this question on bore p, so we are only going to look at bore p's conditions. So bore p has a mass of 0 0.2, we've calculated that, both of the balls have a mass of 0 0.2. Now its final velocity for bore p was minus 6 if we chose right as positive, which we did, so that'll be a negative 6, then we say minus, then 0 0.2, and then the initial velocity was the 10, and that was going east, so that's positive. Now the time of the collision, guys, is this part here. From here to here, that is the collision. And so if you had to read this off on the x-axis, this would be 1.2. Oh, no, no, you've got to be careful. Sorry, I made a mistake there. 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 2. Okay, so it's 1.25, that's when the crash started, and the crash ended at 1.75. So if you work that out, you'll see that the delta T is 1.75 minus 1.25. And so that's going to be 0 0.5 seconds. Now if we go work this out, we get negative 6.4. And so therefore, we can say that the F net on P is 6.4 newtons west. Why do I say that? Because we got a negative answer when we were choosing east as positive. And so that's the answer for that. Now I just noticed that they did say the magnitude. When they say magnitude, that only means the size. So you technically don't need to give the direction. So you would have been absolutely fine if you just said 6.4 newtons. When they say magnitude, they're not worried about the direction. But for those of you that are technical and you wanna know the direction, it is west. Okay, so now we're on to 3.4. What we should know by now is that change in momentum stands for P final minus P initial. So writing it out in words, we can say that the change is equal to final momentum minus initial momentum. Now, this one's actually quite interesting. Did you know what resultant actually means? Resultant means the sum of two or more vectors. The word sum means plus. So what you need to do is you need to take this expression and you need to try and turn it into a plus somehow. Give this some thought, but what you would eventually find is that the only way to do that is to say final momentum is equal to the change plus the initial momentum. Using symbols, we can say delta P plus, whoops, how did that become an equals, plus the initial momentum equals to the final momentum. So it says which of these represents the resultant? Now the resultant is the sum of two or more. So this is the answer, the final momentum because it's the sum of two or more. So the final answer for this one is P final. If you didn't get that one, don't stress. You probably will never see a question like that ever again. Well, let me write it a bit better. Um, the initial momentum. And then the last question, 3.4.2. Draw a vector diagram. This is also something you'll hardly ever see. To explain your answer to question 3.4.1, remember to label the vectors in your diagram. Okay, so... Pretty much what we'd do, because we're talking about bore P, we know that bore P was originally going east, so it's got some type of initial momentum, so I'll say P initial. 
then it has a final momentum which was going to the left or east I mean west so that would be like that and then the change in momentum would be going left that would be change in the momentum if you struggle to know that change in momentum is going to the left well what we know is that change in momentum is the final minus the initial and for ball P, let's say we chose right as positive, let's say we chose to the right as positive, then the change in momentum would be the final momentum. Now the final momentum is going to the left, so that would be some negative value, minus the initial um, momentum is going to the right, and we chose right as positive, so that's some positive value. So the change in the momentum would be a negative, and then a negative and a positive becomes a so it'll be like negative 5, for example, minus 10. And so whatever those numbers are, you're going to get a negative answer. So you chose right as positive, but your change in momentum is negative. So this just means that your change in momentum is actually going to the left. And that's why I've drawn it like that. Okay. Now, pretty much what we should be able to see is that this arrow here is the result if you had to add these two arrows together. Let me show you what I mean. If you take this long pink one and then you put this initial momentum next to it, so maybe over there. So what this means is take the pink one and then take away all of this length. So take that away. So we're taking that off of that. Then all that you are left with is a little vector of this length here which would correspond to your final momentum so this diagram is showing us and guys once again if this question is confusing you this last part don't stress I've been teaching for so long and I've never really seen them ask something like this before um, it's not that important trust me but what we should be able to see from this diagram is that this little arrow is the sum of these two put together okay and so once again, I'm going to end off by saying that question 3.4, I really wouldn't stress too much about that. A lot of you are going to find that one a bit confusing. Um, it's weird, but it doesn't count a lot of marks. It's not that important.